have we reached peak condo? The strong condo prices have reached a top where they're going to start tumbling down now. Let's see. Are rents too expensive? Are the prices too expensive? Are we going to start seeing those prices stabilize and coming down? There's some indication in the market this is actually starting to happen. And I want to show you what's going on right now. Hello, everyone. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent, Mortgage Broker, Research Realty, and Search uh, Mortgage. And today, we're going to look at what is going on in Toronto Condos market. Okay. Um, I got a nice listing here, which will be a very good uh, um, opener to this thing. And please bear with me. We're going to go through sites. We're going to go through numbers. We're going to go through Twitter, YouTube, condo calculators, everything. If you make it to the end of the video, please put in the comment 1%. 1% the, the, the comments of the video, and I'll send you a very special link. Okay, so uh, let's dive right into it. Here's a listing from yossi.searchrealty.co, which is my um, search realty site. And here, this is a fashion house, and this is a unit asking 549.9, 550, uh, 560 King Street West, unit 510. So that's a really lovely unit. Uh, it's a one bedroom. It's a typical one bedroom at fashion house. It's got it's got the um, the kitchen at the back, which I really like. So it gives you the uh, the opportunity to use the entire room and not most of these condos you buy in these days with the one bedroom, uh, the kitchen on the side of the living room, which makes a, a big problem for people to stay in. So when you buy these units, remember what I'm telling you, like buy this type of units. If you can find them, I know where they are. I know which buildings they're in, by the way. Okay, so that's the unit. It's a typical King West, uh, 500-ish uh, square feet, asking 550. It's, it's uh, technically, it's a, even a studio. And the reason they can call it a uh, one bedroom is because uh, there's some light and there's a window to the bedroom. Okay, that's kind of a trick. But it is what it is. You know, one bedroom is uh, your definition as good as mine. But there you go. I've been in these units. They're very nice, actually. They're quite comfortable, especially because the kitchen is at the back. You got lots of light. Uh, this one's facing east towards the CN Tower. Mind you, there will be a building uh, in front of you here. And down there, you can see that little building with the, with the pink sign. That's uh, King West. Now, those units there. 500 square feet go for about $800,000, okay? That's insane. So here, you have a unit for a quarter million dollars less, uh, almost uh, you know 50% more from Fashion House or 30% down from across the street. So I like to look at this one because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a typical unit for the area. It's in, a great con it's in great condition. It's obviously staged really well. Fashion House is a lovely pool. You know, everyone wants to be in a pool. It's, it's a great building. I really love it. That's the gym. Everything's cool. So does that unit make sense? Let's look at some numbers and let's look at what's going on in the market. I'll show you that I think the prices have stabilized and maybe even started to go down, both on the rent side and on the sales side, okay? So watch this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to bring you to my Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where you find all the updates. Uh, right now, I'm pinning here. 488 University condos for sale because they got a beautiful one bedroom for sale here. Now that's a premium building. It's a super high floor, direct south facing, huge balcony. Everything's good. I mean, this is this is this is one of the top buildings in the city, and it's connected directly to Subway. You do not need to step your foot outside to go to Subway. Okay, um, Subway is in TTC, not the sandwich place. Uh, new videos, you know, if the new video, it will be posted here. 2020 investing strategies. Is it too late to invest, which a lot of people enjoyed. Every new video will come here. There's a lot of good links. If you want to find condos, assignments, investments, VIPs, whatever, it's all here. The calculator. All these links are here. So that's the Twitter. Um, YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Again, 1%. You made it to the end of the video. Put 1%. I'll send you a special link. Um, there it is. All the videos are right here. Hit the videos and see what you want to see. Uh, lots of information I've been sharing for a long time now, and I'm really enjoying this. And thank you, everyone, for the thumbs up, for subscribing, for hitting the bell, all that stuff. Do it now. Okay, calmthecalculator.ca. Put your name, put your email. I'm not a robot, and they'll give you this. Um, it'll, it'll email you the spreadsheet, which I'll go over with you in a minute and show you if these condos actually make any sense, investment sense. <clears throat> UrbanRealtyToronto.com, my main website. I've got a bunch of websites. I'm not going to go through all of them today. Uh, but if you need information here or just run a search and you find information about the most important condos in the city, the most important projects like this one here, Toronto Best Condo Investment Projects, they're still ongoing. By the way, uh, this is a well by Tridel. Um, this past weekend, yesterday or Saturday, uh, there's a handful of studios released at, uh, at Crosstown, right here at Crosstown. And those were priced, so our price from three fifty seven nine ninety dollars and up. Yeah. So there's like a there's a handful of units there in the building right now. They're selling 
below $400,000. And that, to me, is an amazing investment. And also, the price is less than 1000 a foot. Really, really good. Okay, let's get into meat of things, okay? I'm going to go to condos.ca. It's a fantastic research tool. We've got some like eight or nine programmers working on it. It was down last week, okay? So, you know, the, the numbers come and go, but more or less, it's very solid, and, and I use it. Now, if you look here, there's sales and there's lease. We're going to focus on the sales, and by default, you got to be logged in. <coughs> You'll see $727 a foot is the average that condos.ca calculates for Toronto for the 416, and that's based on 14 days only. I wish it was based on 28 days or 35 days. You know, it's a bit of a short, uh, but nonetheless, when you scroll down, and this, you're going to have to open it if you haven't, if you just logged in, and it's going to show you here. All the way from 2015, when we're looking at um, 435 a foot, you know, all that stuff, and then some, sometime in 2016, we hit the $500 a foot, and then it just went up real fast in 2016 from, you know, four. 81 a foot, and we finished 2016 at 558 a foot. So that was a huge, huge, huge increase. Okay, well over 10%. And then 2017 saw the same, and then 2018 still pushed up, and 2019 still pushed up, and we reached peak condo um, just this summer, June 2019, according to condos.ca. Okay, but it's more or less parallel to the TREB, to the Toronto MLS because um, they're both using the same database. It's just the way how to slice and dice the information. Uh, with 1,726 sales for the month of June, it's 7.74 estimated average dollar per foot. And from there, we have not reached that price again. So that's peak condo. Um, it just happened, you know, five, six months ago. And now we're down to 7.27 here and 7.36 here. Um, um, so you can see there's a downslope pressure on prices and right now it basically tells me that I am at the same price I was year over year so if I'm here and mind you we only we only uh, about half through November so there'll be a lot more sales and not all of them report them and anything that closed and still um, hasn't been reported not gonna show here so it's gonna take you know anything you see here is at least three days old probably a week old so in a week you'll see what happened last week and it rolls forward Nonetheless, it gives you, and that's the, the gray, um, those are the volumes of how many condos we, how many condos we sold. And you can see, usually you see spikes in volume, kind of like stocks or Bitcoin. There's a lot of trading happening when the price going up, and there's a lot of trading when the price going down. And when it's stable, you know it's stable. It's more seasonal. So you can see here, um, 2018 was a seasonal year. 2018 was a seasonal year. Those are also seasonal. You know, they peak in, the, in, they peak in April, May, June. Nonetheless... Um, the, the, the volume of ferocity uh, of, of transactions were mind-boggling in 2016, 17, even 15, and we're not at that stage yet, okay? We haven't, we haven't hit it, although we add condos all the time. What does that mean? That means that relatively, a, a, slow, a slightly smaller percentage of condos are changing hands. Hand. That should, in theory, put uh, pressure on prices up, but if there are so many units available, you know, maybe not. And I'm going to go into the rentals in a second and show you. I'll go to rentals right now. And look at this. And this is so interesting. Once you go to the lease, uh, we're getting $3.46. So three, $3.50 a foot. And it's down by about 2% year over year. So we've reached peak condo again July 2019 with 3.71 a foot. All of Toronto, not just King West or Yorkville. Okay. And from there, every month, the rental rates have been going down. Now, um, this is, you know, 371, 347, so I got like, uh, you know, that's significant. I mean, it's, it's just 20 some cents maybe, but that's significant because it's, it's continuous, okay? So now I'm at, at the 350 a foot, you know, I'm back to December 2018 range and July 2018 range, so... You know, if I use the, uh, the measuring stick uh, at 350 a foot, and you can see that any, any, from July all the way to last month, we managed to rent units to renters 350 a foot or more. And now the prices are coming down. Why would that happen? Well, there's a simple rule of supply and demand. So you would assume, and I'm going to prove it to you right now, you would assume that if uh, the, the rental uh, rates are going down, there are more units in the market, and the renters can choose, be more choosy, and then all the uh, landlords, the investors, they are uh, fighting with each other. You know, I have a unit, but I have a unit, but I have a unit, but I have a unit. 
they're going to have to start reducing their prices because the, the, the prospective tenant will say, well, Yossi, I can rent from you for three fifty a foot, but he's going to give me three forty a foot. You know, $2,100 for your unit, but I got the same one for $2,000 unit. Which one would the renter take? Obviously, the cheaper one because the renter is finite finite uh, amount of money to have, okay? So do you want to see some numbers on this? I'll show you like real numbers. And you, we can dial down here. They don't give you year over year or month over month, but you can see there are right now... 3,687 units available for rent on the MLS system right now. That does not include all the, all the listings that are not on MLS. So assignments, a lot of them are now have a right to lease during occupancy. They will be. So it doesn't even mean they'll be on MLS. Um, right to lease doesn't mean you can be on MLS. It just means right to lease. But even so, uh, the, I think it's a high number. There are more units for rent than are for sale. Now, 2,405 units available for sale. Is that a lot in our city? It's okay. It's not that much. I mean, you know, we're transacting at least 100,000 units a year here, um, just a resale. So there, you know, two and a half percent of them. That that's still not a lot. Nonetheless, if you look at it as vacancy rates, it doesn't give me, you know, how many units do I have available in the city, and how many units are available for rent. 2,405. This divide by that gives me the vacancy rate. Obviously, the vacancy rate is higher than what's reported uh, because it doesn't count the Airbnbs. It doesn't count the units that are not on MLS. It doesn't count the units that are leased privately. You know, hey, guys, I put on my Facebook. I got a one-bedroom coming up, and somebody sees it and takes it. It never made it to MLS. It never made it to the stats. Okay, but gives you an idea. Now, look here. The prices of the one-bedroom uh, are good. They're nine ninety a foot, 1000 a foot. That's reasonable. And of course, the larger the unit, the lower the dollar per foot will be. So 943 for the one plus den, and 833 for the two bedroom, and 844 slightly up for the three bedroom or the large one, because that can be a penthouse or a high ceiling or, or a large, exceptionally large unit. Maybe uh, a unique unit, maybe they'll charge a bit more. Okay, so the two bedroom, um, especially the large two bedroom, is a lower ROI. So if you want to max the ROI, uh, and I showed it to you in the Nordy Condo video. If you go to the Nordy Condo, it ex I explain it in a lot of detail. What is the type of unit right here? What is the type of unit you got to buy in order to maximize? And then that's of course came in the Nordy Condo as a, the smallest two bedroom you can you can buy. It's a, it's a whole discussion in there. And then there's the break even in uh, one or two three bedrooms that goes to the very little detail. It's a long video, but you can watch these and it'll tell you. I'm gonna go back here, okay? Because everyone's time is valuable, mine and yours. And I'm going to start showing you something really unique. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just punch downtown. And you can follow me. You can put this video in one window and open another window and do just the same. <coughs> now, depending which day you log to condos.ca, the numbers may be a little different, but more or less, I think they'll be similar. Watch this. They are in this where it's highlighted in black. There are 878 uh, downtown condos for sale available right now. And that's considered downtown. Now, I can add the block for Trinity Bellwoods, so it's add a few more and skews the result a bit, and it doesn't really matter to me, you know, to me, the downtown really, um, you know, this is down, little Portugal, that's downtown, that's downtown, that's downtown, you know, uh, Duffy Mall is downtown these days, uh, all the way to High Park, that's downtown, so, you know, from the Humbert to the Dawn, um, this triangle, that's to me downtown, and as a matter of fact, even the, the Riverdale, the E123, the more or less downtown to me, okay? So you're looking at about, you know, 800 to 900 condos available for sale. Uh, um, how many for rent? I just hit that for rent. Uh, and it says 3,749. Mind you, that's a much higher number than we saw in the other page. Uh, that's because I don't know how they exactly do it. Um, but I'll, I'll do search as I move. So once you click this, it's going to recalculate and just show me the map area. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this number for rent should come down a little bit, okay? But it's still 2,000 condos in this area. There are 2,000 condos you can rate right now in this area, and that does not include the Kijiji, the Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, all these that may have units which are not listed in MLS that condos.ta does not have access to. Okay, see what I'm saying? Now, this thing spews all the stuff around, but we're going to start looking specifically into building so that's the building link hit that building link here you got to be logged in um, generate yourself a, a login and start seeing here uh, 
So viable availability, eight for rent. Okay, that's totally fine. Uh, parade, 22 available for rent. That's city place. Um, it's a large building, but look how many large buildings are around it. Remember, guys, I always tell you, buy quality, <laughs> not price. If you're going for a cheaper price, you're going to get a discount in city place. Why? Because there's always so many condos available. You know, uh, it's right there. I can see from my window. And when you look at city place, and there's so many condos there, and it's also south of um, south of King, you know, south of Front, Reclaim Land, um, that will always have a lower psychological value, anything King and up. So there's so many units in a small place. Obviously, there's more units for rent and more units for sale. Price will be always depressed, okay? Nonetheless, Maple Leaf Square, 16 in that, in that complex, 16, and that's in Maple Leaf. Across the street, you got the ice condos, and you got so many other giant towers in the area. So that means that area alone probably counts, and that's called the South Core, South Core. So when you look at the South Core down here, okay, down here, uh, ACC, down bottom here. Um, when you look all these areas here, there's a lot of huge, huge, large buildings. So there's probably a couple hundred units available for rent right now. Now, if I'm one of the owners and I really need to make my rent, you know, I can charge $2,400 a month for this condo calculator. I don't know if uh, I'm using a Loom, different Loom uh, product today, so I don't know if it shows the calculator or not, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. If the rent is, if I'm asking for the rent of $2,400 and my condo was vacant for two months times two, that gives me $4,800. $4,800, if I amortize it over one year to divide by 12, is of course $400. That means that I have two options. One option is to stick to my guns at $2,400 and hope that I can lease it in 60 days and get my $24, but I lost two months, or I can just drop my, my price to $2,000 and try to get someone right away. And that's a very difficult psychological barrier for most owners, especially when they go, you know, I should get the four bucket foot, I should get the five bucket foot. And the markets start to change. Those who are the most stressed for cash will reduce the price. And there could be a domino effect that, you know, I lower my price and everyone else is lowering the prices. But if I'm rich, fat and rich, you know, I send a lot of bags of money, maybe I just don't care. Nonetheless, there's a lot of units. My point is there's so many units on the market right now. Um... And you can see here there's 15 for rent and access. It just finished, so there's high amount. But nonetheless, Selby's 19, Kingly 23 units. They just got their keys, but that's a lot of units in Kingly, especially for the prices they're asking for. And why are the 23 units? And why are they asking for these kind of prices? Because it's it should get five buck a foot, you know. So here's a say a 500 uh, square feet unit asking 2250. See what I'm saying? So this unit here, here, 523 square feet, okay? And it shows you where it is, and it's really nice. Um, but I'll bring that good old uh, calculator again. Okay, so uh, 22250 divided by 523, do it. Okay, that gives you $4.3 a foot. Now, that's quite reasonable because the King West, uh, uh, the King West uh, rates are around the four buck a foot, maybe a little more. Um, and if you want to do it, just clear the filters, punching King West. I really need uh, more memory in this computer. Punching King West, and there are 371 condos available for King West for rent right now in this block from Spadina to that's Dufferin. I think that's Dufferin here. Okay, so that's my King West and from Spadina to Bathurst. Okay, um, and then that's West King West, but nonetheless, that's a lot of units, 371 units. Um, you know, let's go to the analytics here, and the average is 409. So that, that uh, condo we just looked at, okay, um, 409, so calculator, uh, if I were to get 409 times 523, I would get 2139. So these guys are on the money. Okay, they're, 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 that's fine. 2140, 11 bucks apart. So if this owner is getting a, an offer for 2200, they should totally take it. They should totally take it. And note, note you, got, you got the kitchen in the back, just like I like it. You know, it's okay. I don't know if there's actually unit pictures here or just renders. There's a few. It looks fine. 
Okay, you can see the kitchen is the bar. Yeah, it's actually a nice unit. It looks fine. Takes some time to load. Fine. Um, but I'm competing with 370 others like that. Okay. Now, when you look at the rent, you know, last year it only came up average in King West from 397 to 409. It's basically four bucks a foot. It's stuck at four bucks a foot. It tells me 11.1 uh, increase. Uh, how did it do it? It's 13, 13 cents. 1% is 4 cents. That's 3% as far as I can tell. I don't know. Dad taught me how to do math in the head. Uh, you got, you got, uh, you got uh, 3 and 9 is 12 cents. So that's 1% uh, of 4 dollars is uh, 4 cents times 3. So it went up by 3 cents according to the UFC Kaplan calculator, which is right in here. Um, <clears throat> And uh, let's look at the sale. Uh, sales a little better. Went up by 50 bucket foot. Okay, that's nice. 50 bucket foot, that's a lot. We don't want it to go much more than that. Um, but that's average for King, King West all the way down. Uh, mind you, on the, that's, that's almost covering the Queen West. And if it's the, the chunk above is Queen West. Okay, so if I'm just going to turn this off and turn this on. So now Queen West. Actually, slightly higher dollar a foot, 416, especially because all those... Lisgar by the Drake, which all there, and the condos value here, they basically stayed the st same, 1.7 percent. It, it's a negligible error, you know. It's 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 a five thousand dollar here or there. There you go. Um, okay, so you can see here in the rents because I'm on the rent now, um, 4.17 buck a foot, and last year was four or three, so we're stuck in the four dollars a foot. Now, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Let's do it again the search as I move. What's going to happen when you start to buy condos at 1,300 a foot, 1,500 a foot, 1,600 a foot, 2,000 a foot, but the rents cannot catch up? The rents must go up a lot. But remember, if you're renting, the reason you're renting is you just can't afford more or you're saving to buy yourself or you just came to the city. Like you have a budget, okay? Renters have a budget. Um, so us investors, we're buying this unit to lease them out. We need to think, what are we going to do with this stuff, okay? So um, what are you going to do? And I have an answer, of course. Uh, Condocalculator.ca, put your name and email, okay, and then the, the, the system will fire you an email with this link. Download this file, upload it to your own Google Sheets, uh, Apple Numbers, uh, Excel, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, whatever they're called, um, and just put it here. So let's say uh, this, uh, you got three options, King West, one bedroom, 500 square feet, that's the fashion house, 549, so that comes to 1100, um, 1100 uh, a foot, my purchase price, my deposit for 20% need to be $110,000, my, uh, so that's here, and I, I need to mortgage 439, I did it before, I did, I actually did the whole video, and, and the file just got corrupted, so I'm doing it again, so I got the numbers easier, so 410, remember, uh, that property that I showed you, I still have it open, I do, right here, Okay, so if I go back here, and that's yossi.searchrealty.co, where you get this. Uh, and right here, you'll see, where am I? Here, 411.44 is monthly association fee or condo fees and property tax 21.33 for the year. So I, I already did it. So 410, 411, whatever, and, and um, 21.33 divided by 12, come to 177. So now it doesn't show me a full percent, but I'm just following the MLS here, okay? So that's more or less it. And I gave myself a really nice uh, rate on the mortgage, 2.69, okay? And guess what? 410 for the condo, 183 for the municipal tax, 2000 for the mortgage, because I'm big mortgage for four, to cover 440. So I got 2605. So 2605, how many dollars a foot I need to break even? Well, the condo calculator will do it. There's the condo analysis right here. The break even, we just said 2605. Cost per bedroom, I only have one bedroom, so it's the same. And the rent PSF requires 5.21. Okay, that's over 25% more than what I get now. How long would it take the market to come up from four buck a foot to 520 a foot? 25, over 25% uh, increase. You know, salaries don't go up by 25% overnight. Uh, you get 2 to 5% uh, increase in your salary. Half of that gets eaten by taxes and, and all kinds of deductions. 
You know that. You get all this money, and at the end of the day, like, you had nothing, right? Like, everyone, everyone, this weekend, wherever I was, all I could hear is, I, I make $100,000, I, I can't even save, I'm barely surviving. Yeah, Toronto is very, very expensive. There's a video, why is Toronto so expensive? It's down here somewhere. Toronto is too expensive, Toronto is so expensive. Uh, somewhere in there. I want to go back, okay? You're going to need... So if I'm actually going to get $4 a foot, I'm going to get about $2,000 a month. You know what? Let's say I got $2,150, okay? I'm still losing $455 a month, according to the counter calculator, if I do a 20% mortgage. I'm losing $5,500 a year or 5% a year, and my annual ROI is negative. Negative ROI, negative cash flow, $450 a month, um, considering that. Now... Obviously, I'm not included the payback because once you pay mortgage, about half of that at the beginning and then more and more and more goes towards your capital. <clears throat> so if I'm spending mortgage about uh, 2000 here, say 1000 bucks go back in, okay, that's good. If I'm making 1000 bucks in, as if I made 3150 but I'm not, it just goes towards the, my bank account. Now I make the money. Now I make 545 a month. Now I make 6500 a year. Now I make the 6% a year. Now it, make, it still makes sense. But it's not money you could use. It's money you could use only when you sold and then you paid capital gains and all the expenses. So it's getting very, very tricky. It's getting very, very tricky. $2,150. So what can you do? Well, first of all, you need to buy the most efficient unit you can, which means the most efficient unit, this number here, this number here, the annual ROI or the cash flow, any of these, they're all, they're all really representation of the same thing. Um, and they're all, they're all one move, the other move. Um, they got to be up above zero as much as possible. One way to do it is to put more money down. What happens when I throw another $55,000 at it? I'm just gonna throw, so I use the occupancy here, the yellow is your input information. I'm just gonna put 10 more, so 54550 five because my price is 54999. Okay, so now my mortgage is reduced by $55,000 and now my mortgage payments reduced a little bit by about 250. Ah, still not enough. Okay, so. Uh, what else can I do? I mean, I'm already like, these are real numbers, condo fees and taxes. Mortgage 269 is more or less as cheap as I can get. I'm a mortgage broker too. If you need mortgage or just want to refinance or whatever, let me know. I can help you. Uh, let's say I'm going to put throw 15% down, another 50000 at it, okay? 80, almost $200,000 I'm going to put down on this property. I'm only going to finance 357 Okay, now I'm breaking even. Now I'm finally breaking even. I finally made it to equilibrium with my expenses. Uh, two, 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 eight are more or less equal to my income, 2150. And that's cash, 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 net, net, net. That means I rented it. It didn't cost me any money to rent it. I had no vacancy, all that stuff. So that is complicated stuff, my friends, okay? You got to be very careful. I'm going to go over a few more points, but you understand that we're getting to a point where it's very, very difficult. Uh, you want to make a comparison? Uh, let's do a King West 2, okay? And this will be at King West also. And it'll be a, um, it'll be a one bedroom, 500 square feet. But this one, I paid $750 for. So I paid $1,500 a foot for, okay? Now, my mortgage, at, at, at first we'll do it the regular way, and then we'll do it the other way. So at 20%, I'm putting 150 down, and my mortgage is $600,000. It's the same condo. Okay, now the taxes are going to go up because I paid more. I'll just leave it at that. It's not, it's 70 bucks. I'm just going to leave it, but the mortgage is significantly higher, another $700 higher. And now my cost per month is $3,400 a month. I need $3,400 a month to break even. Can I charge $3,000 a month for this fancy, fancy condo? Um, it could be the best in the world, but can I charge $3,000 a month for it? 3000 a month, okay, I need to get $6.81 uh, cents rent PSF required, Six eighty one. that's crazy, okay, that's very high, very few, some will be able to afford it, obviously there's always something, but some would not, okay, just for kicks, 500 square feet at $2,000 a foot, $1 million, remember that video, $1 million, one bedroom, $1 million, I was standing there in front of the uh, King West, I said, one bedroom, a million, just, just wait to see. They sold out. They sold out. They might have some penthouse left. And yes, 
I would invest in a penthouse there in two thousand dollars of it, absolutely. And I would invest in uh, the well trader, absolutely, because the the location and the fact that Shopify is right there. But that's how investors go. And yes, I would invest at Cross Town because I can get a few studio for four hundred thousand dollars or three hundred sixty thousand dollars. That's amazing. That's an amazing deal because you can own something in the city, the best city in the world, not the most expensive city in the world, but a lot of money coming here because other places are too expensive. They just shovel the money back into Toronto. Okay. So at two thousand a foot, uh, your deposit is two hundred thousand dollars, um, eight hundred thousand mortgage. Obviously, the condo fees are the same for this. Uh, the municipal tax, even at point four, is three three three. So it's forty four hundred dollars. Obviously, if this municipal tax, okay, if this thing here is more realistic, like one percent, then the, it's five thousand dollars a month for this one bedroom, sixty thousand a year, and now I need. Ten dollars a foot rent to cover. Now these numbers sound fantastic, but you wait and see. You will start to see these numbers soon. A certain project push the envelope up and up and up. Good or bad? That's not the point. The point is, Toronto will go up in price, but I think that at some point, which is now, we're going to start seeing some slowdown, some kind of sobriety kicking in, and it really depends if the money. From the east, China, Hong Kong,、uh, maybe India, Pakistan, wherever most immigrants come, that money is still available. That money, I'm absolutely sure,、um, fueling a lot of these purchases here, and that is a conundrum. It's a problem. And the one thing it's good for Canada to bring all these people with lots of money. They're educated. They got money. They buy stuff. They consume stuff. They help us locals. But the other hand, it pushes the price up so much that us local. We become the renters, the tenants of the newcomers. Why? Because they come from U- with U.S. dollars. So you know,、um, if you have six hundred fifty thousand U.S. dollars, guess what? That's one million Canadian, and that's cheap in global terms.、Um, Where's the Numbio? There is a site called Numbio Number Number O,、uh, and it does cost of living, property prices. So I looked at this thing:、uh, property prices comparison between Toronto and Vancouver. And this is people submit their own information. It's completely subjective, but you can you can tell you here that Toronto and Vancouver is more or less the same. More these percentages of income, so it's a lot, it's almost the same right now. Vancouver came down, but look here, okay, Beijing. You need the ratio from uh, income uh, price to income ratio is forty five. That means you need a lot of income, a lot of salaries to buy in Beijing, and London may be next. And Prague, I, I don't know why Prague. Uh, but there, but look at New York; it's actually a lot cheaper relatively. Now, the price in New York may be higher, but they may make more money or have more available money according to this report. Okay,、um, and look at Toronto and Vancouver; they're the same. And they need about fourteen point two three. So I guess、uh, what they do is they take the average、uh, condo or the average house and divide by the average salary, and, you know, fourteen salary, something like that.、Uh, those usually how these things work. But the thing is, if you're in Beijing, why would you buy in Beijing when you can buy in Toronto for so much less, relatively speaking? So if you have a million dollars in Beijing, probably not going to take you very far. But a million dollars in Toronto or Vancouver will take you very, very far, and actually farther in Berlin. But that's it.、Um, maybe you want to go to Australia, but Europe is too expensive.、Uh, Brazil is too expensive. So where are you going to go? You're going to come right here, Toronto, Vancouver. The U.S. is、uh, harder to、uh, immigrate into. You're gonna come to Toronto, Vancouver. All this money flowing in here, pushing prices up. But what's gonna happen to this money when when it's expecting to break even? It may not be able to break even because the rent required is much much higher than the rent physically available. Okay, so if I'm a renter and I can I can put two thousand dollars a month on the condo, you know, even twenty two is just too much for me. So. That's why you see a lot of rental, a lot of rentals available, a lot, a lot of rentals available. So many actually, it's unbelievable. So look at this. And remember, you made it to the end of the video. Put one percent at the bottom. I send you a special link. Don't know what it is yet, but I'll find a good one. Okay.、Um, so Luna Vista, twenty-three. It's city place. It's very busy. Parade just next door, twenty-two. So that's already almost fifty units、uh, and two buildings. So if you know any of these dozen buildings here. Um, at City Place, just the City Place west of Spadina has 20 some. That's already 250 units. Just at City Place, available for rent out of 485 in the in that 
custom area of the map. And you know, as I zoom in, obviously less units because I'm zooming in. 160. That's still a lot. It's 160 units. Let's zoom in on King West here and get rid of uh, City Place. It should my number should drop. No, it did not drop. Okay, so that's a problem. 23 in King Lee. Yes, they got the keys, but that's 23. 75 Portland. Seven. Fashion has 12. Portland, the old building down by uh, uh, by bathrooms in the front there. Six. That's not bad, but you know it's noisy and dusty there. Uh, those are good. Though. That's good. You know, two units. That's great. But again. That guy that is renting in 32 store, one of my first investments, by the way, a long time ago, a long time ago, sold it. Um, Stuart Lofts. It's really nice, but think about it this way. You think, oh, there's only two units in my building. Yeah, but there's 160 around you. Right away, that you can walk to in a second. <coughs> Minto West Side, 30 units. A new building, right? So big unit, 30 units. So you're competing. So let's see, what can I get a Minto? Now, Minto is... This Minto is, uh, is uh, I'll, I'll give it like a medium. Um, it's more of a, it's, it's a value building, but the rents asking are very high. They're asking high rents here. Okay. Um, sale, now, there may be not a lot of information because it's still new. Uh, there's only four reported because a lot of them just, just word of mouth and they're, maybe they're not MLS yet. And some of them did get very, very high numbers, but it doesn't mean the rest will. We'll, we'll know once we get more information. Nonetheless, you got uh, 30 units for rent in one building. That's one. And just the King West alone um, got 167. Okay, so no parking, 2200. Now, how long can an owner like this sit on the market before they go, you know, it's not worth it for me. Every month I'm not renting, I'm losing 2200. Uh, if I have to sit on the market for two and a half months, I lost $5,000. $5,000 divided by 12. Do the number. That's 400 and uh, something dollars a month. Maybe I should just lower my price to 2000 or 1900 1800 and just rent it and at least get a tenant. Now, the problem is, of course, why would you do it when you cannot in the next year bring the price up? You stuck with it because now you stuck with it and you can only do... Um, because you got the rent control applying to all new buildings now. That's a big problem, okay? That's going to come into play. So there's be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the local government, the Ontario government, to release the rent control. But at the same time, there's also a lot of pressure on the, on the local government not to release rent control because prices are already so high. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not taking sides here, but I'm just trying to show you. It could be this. It could be that, okay? Uh, but you, you start to see that those are big problems, okay? 501 Adelaide. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Kingly, it's called. 23 units. Another new building, okay? So I got 50-some units between these two new buildings, but around me there's still another 150 or so units. So what do I got here? I got uh, a studio for 2100 a one-bedroom for 22 a one-bedroom for 2250 uh, 2300 You know, price going up as I... Move down, 23, 23, 23, 24. So now I get into the 600 square feet. The cheapest I can find here is 2,300. 2,300, okay? And this guy here, one bedroom, uh, under 500 square feet, wants 2,400. So they may have to sit on the market for a while. Okay, I don't know, but they might. Um, what do I get for 5,000 a month? I get, uh, okay, so I get 1000 So that's almost 5 bucks a foot, what they're asking here. Very, very nice. Now, it might be furnished, um, but if it's furnished, it's great. And if, I, if they're lucky and I, I, I got myself a place for a year at 5000 very good. Now, 48 University, I think it'll be much, much easier to do it because it's right in the university. You got the hospitals. You got the government. That's a good place to me that I'm confident I can get 5000 a month. Here, I got 23 units. Uh, there's another one at the same size for 45. That's 500 bucks less. Three bedroom. There's another three bedroom here with parking for 44. Uh, there's a two tube, no parking, 43. There's a two tube with one parking, smaller one for 42. You see, you see how it works. Okay, 42. So that's that's already like 42.50 per foot. It's not bad, but it's still you know 21, 20, 2100 something 
per one bedroom. That's high because remember the condo calculator will give you the price per bedroom that you need to reach, which is down here, cost per bedroom. Okay, I'll highlight it for you here. So I want my cost per bedroom. Oh, by the way, that's a mistake because that was a one bedroom. So the cost per bedroom is what I want to see here. And then that, that, that number also needs to be low. If I can get my cost per bedroom on the 1500 it's okay. Then I can put two people 1500 each. That's not bad because you cannot get a one bedroom 1500 and That would be the reason to, uh, to take a two bedroom because then, you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather own a two bedroom, a nice two bedroom, than a bunch of small little one bedroom with no view or kind of bad design because they're too small in the kitchen. And I don't like those. I like quality. Okay? So I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just like some dude yelling at the screen or actually making sense to you, but I really hope you can see it. So what would be the case for buying a construction when it's all going for $1,300, $1,500 $1, foot? Well, that's easy. One thing is you want a good store of value. You, if you don't want to get into a 5 or 10 euro building, you can get something like Theo, which are large units. It's long-term investment. We can get a townhouse, which are like some of the hottest commodities still and always would be in Toronto because they're just... All the units are just too small. Or you get into by the subway, the forest hill, which is about 1,300 a foot. Or one, two, three points, 13, 1,400 a foot. Okay. Uh, gallery, if you can find it at 1,000 a foot, you should buy it. Nordic condo, we still have the three bedrooms at about eight something a foot. You should buy them. Okay. So those are good. Those are good. Those are good. I like those. Those I would consider A and X. Uh, a and X, I did a whole video about it. And to me, that's, um, I couldn't think of spending. 1300 foot in a better place than ANX. Why? Because it's so unique, the area is so good, and it's not an investor building. Just come to ANX, put your name and your phone number, I'll send you the prices, today's prices. It doesn't have a lot of units. It says 85, I believe there's 105 at the, the final one. Free development for Fashion House, Thompson, Galleria. To me, that'll be a very good investment. At 1300 foot, that's totally fine. Because it's such a unique product, and if I can get like a nice two bedroom that makes a lot of sense, that gives me longevity. Okay, remember the 3L video, longevity. Okay, so that's it for today. I think that we may see something happening in the market that's going to bring prices down. There's a lot of rentals on the market. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they all got rid of Airbnb all the same day. 111 bathrooms, 10 units. Thompson, 24. Older one, okay, I'm um, use A8, that's not bad actually, 525, those are okay, those are okay, but some of them, too many, even the old Thompson, six. If it's only six, it's not, it hasn't been built, shouldn't be there, it hasn't been built, shouldn't be there, it hasn't been, shouldn't be there, so it's sure, it's, these buildings should not be there because they, have, they haven't been built. Uh, but those who are, you know, 12 here, 24 here, 23 here, that's starting to be, it's starting to be a bit alarming because you have to understand the rent cannot go up as quickly as the rents, as, as, as the prices, because people are finite. Now, we may get into a Hong Kong situation here where the prices will keep going up because that store of value, because people don't trust the government, don't trust the real estate market, maybe don't trust the Bitcoin, you know, like who knows, right? So they say, you know, I'd rather get the condo and pay a little bit more down, like I showed you here, pay down by, by increasing uh, this amount here, right? So I'm just going to put, I got some money, I got some cash, I might as well put it here because I'm not going to get a better return anywhere else. So just put the money here uh, because, I mean, this is a very nice unit at 550. It's still a really good buy. I mean, it's gorgeous and someone would be happy to live there. And if they pay 2000 this year, that's okay. But the next one, and next time it'll probably pay 22 and 24, and eventually it'll go up to 3,000. And it won't take that long. It'll take a few years, but it won't take that long. So there's always, there's always, there's always a good, there's always, there's always a give and take here. I don't know what I pressed. Uh, there's always, oh, I, oh, that's here. There's always a give and take, um, but you gotta be cautious about what you're doing. If you buy new construction, do me a favor, give me a call. I'll give you the ins and outs. Uh, somebody came to me last night we're looking to buy in an area that I did not like. I thought there was too many condos there. I thought the area wasn't developed enough. It didn't have community. It didn't have retail. It didn't have, it didn't have life. And it's going to be 100%, 95% all investors. You know, all these small units stack on top of each other. Yes, it's a little cheaper, so you know, your eyes go big, but it may, in the long term, 
you may be better off spending a little bit more money getting a little small unit, but a better building. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Good luck. You'll see out. 1%.